met at Street Jam 2000. Bishop Merritt did a uh, he did an outside Street Jam thing. <laughs> I don't know what that thing was, but anyway, I went there. I'd seen her singing with Fred Hammond. Uh, I was invited by a friend to go to it, and so I seen her standing outside. Walked up to her at this concert, an outside concert, and uh, we just kind of connected there. I had her come to my church in Flint. That's kind of the, the gist of it. Come on, put your hands together. I had to know I wanted you <laughs> well, yeah. because you had on that powder blue suit. When I first <laughs> met him, <clears throat> here we go. He had on this powder blue outfit <laughs> from head to toe <laughs> that I was just like, where is he going? Like, what is happening right now? It was just powder blue shirt, powder blue pants, powder blue shoes. And these shoes were plastic. Like, if he walked they past plastic. anything flammable, he was going to melt. <laughs> But I guess I didn't realize the challenges associated with having interracial kids until I went one day to pick up my kids from the gym's daycare. And it was a little black boy in there. He had to be maybe about five years old. And he came up to me and he said, you picking them up? And I said, yeah, I'm picking them up. And he was like, you, you they babysitter? And I said, no, I'm not their babysitter. You they auntie? I said, no, I'm their mom. And he looked so puzzled, like, and he said, but you, but you, you brown and they white. I said, no, they're not just white, <laughs> they're mixed. And I guess then it kind of dawned on me, like, they're probably going to have to answer questions to their classmates and friends when they go to school and they see, you know, a black mom coming and picking them up because they are more fair skinned than they are black. And so I guess I was like, wow. When we started a church, we didn't really have like this time limit on praise and worship. Like even before we were a church, we would have services where we would just sing and worship. And to this day, like that's what it is. Our church is just a worshiping church. It's yeah. nobody feels like when are they going to stop singing? It's just it, it's what the church is. challenges came more so from the African-American community than it did anybody outside of that. The African-American community is more vocal about race relations. They're more open to their opinion and having certain things to say because we feel justified in doing it because of slavery and prejudice and injustices that happened to us. Actually, it was African-American men that had things to say to me about being with the white man. First time I met Gail and Shani, they were singing at a, at a church on the east side and I just got saved. I mean, literally, like, just got saved, like, a couple of months into it, and everything that that he was saying, he was he was ministering, he was singing, it was fresh, it was it was different than what every other church, was, you know, was, was speaking. I don't mean to make a comparison, but I've seen a lot of churches um, grow off of uh, what excites people but this is a church this is a church that that really speaks to uh, the spirit it really it really builds up 
everybody that, that comes to this, I mean, and so I think that right now we're in a season like, when I say the church, not just vertical, but just the church in its entirety, we, we're in a season where people are looking for the real. My way of dealing with the negativity, um, I believe that I'm somewhat more confrontational than Gail because I don't think that confrontation is a bad thing. I just think that confrontation is saying there's an issue that we need to resolve and it doesn't have to be negative, but I'm not the type of person to know that you've said something or feel a certain way and I don't say, hey, you said this, you feel this way, let's talk about why. Now, when I did overhear two male co-workers that were African-American talking about me being with a white man, I simply walked up to them while they were just hunched over there, yakking their lips, and said, hey, I heard you. And just the look on their face, like, they were so embarrassed and I, it, it showed me like, you know that the way that you feel is inappropriate or else you wouldn't be embarrassed about it. We Our, we, our sense of humors are in line. You know, we both um, are pretty practical in the way we think and in the way that we view things and just in our understanding. Now, we don't always get along 100%, but we definitely are like in agreement on the things that really matter and that just kind of make life Like the way carefree. the way we spend money is the exact same. Oh my God. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, it's not. We got disagreements, but we got a lot in common. I married her for good credit. <laughs> Sometimes I see a white guy when you do certain things that are white. Like eating cottage cheese? Like eating cottage cheese. <sighs> well, listen. It's disgusting. If you guys hear any background noise right now, it's because there's chicken cooking in our crock That's pot. Right. And, uh, That's right. I have chicken. had chicken and more different, uh, everything's chicken. I could have cereal. You want corn puffs? We got chicken. We can sprinkle on it. <laughs> Say that one more time. You high off service? Yes, I'm high off service. <laughs> yeah, they do that to you sometimes, huh? To all of my in-laws and the people that I love in Battle Creek, all of the Brandon family, all of the McCrossin <laughs> family, there's a secret that's about to come out, okay? One of the things about merging these families is holidays. The way that we eat, okay? Now, their spread is good and it's, it's good, but a black Thanksgiving and a white Thanksgiving is completely <laughs> different. And when I went to the first Thanksgiving with his family and I saw that they had corn on the table and canned um, sweet potatoes, I, I went to see Jesus in like for about...